Hi everyone, welcome to Celtic Knot Crochet on YouTube. Today I'm going to show you how to weave the knot for this really easy Celtic heart knot necklace. I published this in a magazine several years ago and the magazine is no longer around but you can get the pattern now for free online. So if you just visit CelticKnotCrochet.com you'll find a link to the pattern there, a free pattern. And then this video, I'll show you how to weave this. It's a nice beginner project, very simple to do. Uh, you do have to work with size 3 crochet thread, which isn't the super thin, but a little bit thicker. Um, but it works up very quickly, and I think it looks nice, especially with Valentine's Day coming up. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Today I'm going to show you how to make this easy Celtic Knot Heart Necklace. Now I published this design a long time ago and you can find the pattern for it online. Just go to my blog at www.CelticKnotCrochet.com and you'll find the link there or you'll find the link below this video. And you'll see um, all the instructions for how to make the cords that make up this knot. And then you'll need to gather your supplies for weaving a knot. So that would include um, a piece of cork board. It's about a quarter inch thick, not very thick. Um, you can get them this small, about five or six by six, or you can cut them. You could also use a piece of foam core poster board. This is a piece of black poster board that I cut up. Uh, it's very lightweight, but it holds the pins in place. In addition to the foam uh, or the cork board, uh, you'll need a bunch of sewing pins, straight sewing pins, and you'll print out a copy of the knot diagram that's included in the instructions. Uh, the only thing is you want to make sure that you print it out so it's three inches across this way. Um, an approximate is fine, but that way it'll work out the correct size. And I also like to print out an extra one uh, to have next to me so I can refer to where all the over and unders are. Uh, you might want to have also a, a pointed yarn needle. Sometimes that helps you get into the, uh, the little places here of over and unders. So now that we have all our supplies together, we're ready to weave the knot. Uh, the directions might ask you to start here at the asterisk, but for this video I've decided that I'm going to start down here at the bottom. I've prepared my cords. Again, uh, according to the instructions, you'll see how many uh, chains you need to make to make it this long and what size hook and all of that. Um, I've also laid my cords out overnight, pinned them in a nice straight line on a towel. I have a picture on the blog of how I did that. And then I just blasted them with some steam from my iron without touching the iron to it, of course and let it dry overnight and that made it a lot less twisty. Uh, when you only do one row of single crochet it often will make a very twirly uh, cord and by blasting it with the iron it's a lot easier. I've also discovered that if I do this upside down then I can do all the joining while it's still pinned to my cork board and then when I take it off I don't have to worry about trying to hold the joins in place. So flip your cord over. If you see, this is the back side of the cord with much more bumpy. This is the right side, the front side. So I'm going to flip it over so that the back side is facing up. I'm going to line the end up right with the end of that red pathway and pin right there at the start. And then I just follow the cord around, pinning as I go to keep it on that pathway. Right here we come across where the other part of the red cord will be passing over, but for now there's no other cord there, so I just go under and follow along. Then when I get to over here, the next bend, I pin at the bend, 
hold it with my finger, wrap around. Just keep following the red. We don't need to look at the white at all. Then when I get to here, I can either pull the cord to the side to see is that an over or under, or I can look at my extra printout and look right here. And this is the one I'm working on and I see that it goes over the cord that I already laid down. And when I do a cross like that, I like to pin it in place where they cross each other. And then I come down to the end of the red path. Now you'll see it doesn't meet up quite at the end. So usually that just means that I need to take out some of the slack. So I'll push the crochet cord. See, now I have some extra because I pulled a little bit on it. Crochet is very forgiving, very stretchy. So I just added a little bit there. And now it reaches to the end. And I'll, and I put a pin right in it. So that's what you have so far. Now I'm going to take the other cord and I'm going to also make sure that I'm putting it on with the right side face down. And this time I'm going to still start at the bottom point, but I'm going to start with the end without the yarn tails, the clean end. This way I have extra yarn right there to do the two joins without having to use more yarn and weave in more ends. And now I'm going to follow the white path just like I followed the red path around. Now this is the hardest part. When we get to here, pin that last bend. Now as you can see, now we have to start going under and over what we already laid down. As you can see there, there's a bunch of over and unders. Now to be a correct Celtic knot, you should always have alternating over and under. You should not have two unders in a row or two overs in a row. If you do, something's wrong with your knot and you have to reweave it or investigate where your mistake would be. So I can also, if you remember, look at my printout. And as I'm coming in with the white path, I see that when I get to the first red one, I'm going to go under. Then the next one I'm going to go over. And then I'm going to go under. So there's three right in a row, under, over, under, because I'm following the white path. So I sometimes do this. You can take the yarn tail thread it through a yarn needle and then that can help you get in there with your fingers. So I needed to go under first, over, and then under. You just have to watch out for the pins. Sometimes it gets caught. Sometimes it flips over. Just make sure you untwist it. And there you can see that I went under, under, over, under. So I just have this loop right there. It's my last pass to finish the knot. I'll leave the needle with the yarn tails threaded through. And now if I look here at this printout, I just came down here and now I'm right here at this bend. And now I can see I'm going to go over the red one, under, over. So three passes again, over, under, over. So over is easy. All I have to do is go under that middle one and then shoot out behind. And I pulled it a little tight. That's no problem. Just pull it back. It also looks like it twisted. So I'll flip, untwist it. And then snug it up so it 
matches the diagram below. That way I know it's going to be the right length to make it to the end. And if I want, I can put a pin right there. All right, and now I just have one more section to do. So if we look here, I just did this section coming across here. So now I'm going to go under, over, under, and then I'm going to meet up at the point. So under this big one that started the white path, then over, then under. And again, I can look here and I can peek under there and I can see, oh, yep, I can tell this says to go under. So you can use whichever method works for you. Sometimes these yarn tails get in the way, but I think it's well worth having them there without having to weave in extra ends and take more time. Now, because I know that Celtic knots go under and over, I just went under, so I know I'm going to go over this one right here, and then I'm going to go under. And that will bring me to the end of the other cord. Again, yarn tail's getting stuck here. Just pull those out. Like that. And twist it, untwist it. And that's going to come right up on top of the other cord, if you see right in there. So it's going to come down and meet up with this cord that's going to sit on top. And I'm going to, that's the two sides I'm going to join together right there. That way, this nice pretty edge is the one that shows, and the not as pretty edge will be hidden by the seaming right there. So now that I have the whole knot woven, I might need to adjust some spaces. I can see this is a little tight right here. Um, this is curling a little. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to join this right here first. That way it's not going to go anywhere and I can move some of the pins. So again, for the video I'm using a pretty big needle, but normally I would use a smaller, almost embroidery size needle that has a, a big enough head for this yarn. And as you see, See that? I'm going to sew it so this, this joins right to there, like that, as shown in the diagram, just like that. Just with a whip stitch. Whip stitch is just catching a few loops on one side and picking up a couple loops on this side. So now that I have the bottom joined, I'm just left with the last join. Um, I'm going to adjust some of these spaces. And I just do that by taking out some of the pins. Because now that the knot is woven nicely, it should stay together without too many pins. Because the under, over, under, over locks it in place. So I'll pull this one up. There's really no right or wrong way to do it. And that's just so the, the smaller heart looks even and balanced. And now I'm going to take those, this yarn tail, the longer one. I like to start on the one on the right. Thread it on my yarn needle. And same way. Try to do it so you can see it. I'll probably join in this, that second stitch there from the end. Grab a loop. 
and then just pull that end right to it. And then I'll pick up a loop on the other side. And then pick up a loop near the end on both of them. Again, this is a bigger needle than I would normally use. But just so you can see. And that snugs up the ending, just like that. And it also creates a nice point. And now I'll show you before I weave in the ends. What it looks like when you turn it over. So there is an easy Celtic knot heart necklace. And then I will weave these ends in so you can't see them. Um, you will be stiffening this. Uh, you do it the same way that I've done other projects on my channel. I'll provide the link for that too below on how to stiffen your crochet projects. You would put down a piece of wax paper or plastic, um, paint the back the wrong side with several coats of fabric stiffener, letting it dry in between. Um, it might take uh, a couple hours, it might take overnight for each coat to dry. I recommend probably two to three for this so it uh, holds its shape since it does have quite a bit of opening here. And then you would, um, I'll show you how to attach the findings. You may also, when you um, weave in your ends, you can also sew some of these joins uh, so it anchors your heart and it doesn't shift. I find that um, since it's a necklace, you could also use hot glue to just a, a small, small dot of hot glue at some of the crossings, maybe here and here, and then that way it won't move or shift on you when you wear it, and it's it pulled up on the sides a little. And then the stiffener acts like a glue too and keeps everything in place. So let's put on the findings. Okay, so now that I have my heart finished, I have yet to um, stiffen it, but let me show you how you add the chain. So I just got this inexpensive chain at Hobby Lobby. Of course, you could get one that's real silver. It has one of these annoying little twist ties on it. And then I just eyeball it. So I want to find the middle. So right around here. It's not exact science. You can always cut more off if you think it's not even. Just take my pliers and cut that small little join right there. It wants to be cut. If you have an issue with that, it might be better to just cut one of the bigger ones. And now my chain is in two pieces, as you can see. So I have two ends, but I still have the clasp on this end, which is nice to have that already done for you. And then here's one that is already mostly completed. So I take a small jump ring, which is just a small circle of wire. See it there? And I thread it through one of the stitches on the edge of the heart. And I leave it open. And then I Put the end of the chain on it and then close it up. I do that on both sides and now I have the necklace completed. So this here is a heart that's been stiffened on the back side only. 
um, I measured or I counted stitches. It depends. You might have to just do it by where it looks best to you. So it's even with the, the sides here. And there you have an easy Celtic knot heart necklace with all the directions and some more photos at CelticKnotCrochet.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. See you next time.